I got some requests to show how to do fisheye correction in Olympus Workspace, and that's the free software from Olympus for your Olympus cameras. And, uh, you know, because I've been doing those videos on the fisheye lenses, uh, the Olympus 8mm Fisheye Pro, and then also like this uh, generic fisheye uh, Pixco 8mm. So the process is going to be very similar regardless of uh, which fisheye lens you have. Yeah, because I, I know like Lawa and Seven Artisans and you know, saw the Sam Yang, they all have fisheye lenses out there for micro four thirds. And uh, I, I wanted to kind of go over the basics of how to begin to do the fisheye correction. Uh, because really that process starts before you even press the shutter button. Uh, just like exposure, right, in photography, really you want to try to get the exposure correct in camera before you try to do any post-processing. Uh, things will go a lot easier. So that's where I'm going to start and then we'll go right into Olympus Workspace and I'll show you the steps that I go through. Okay, so let's just draw a quick building. And I'll just draw a rectangle here. And this represents the side of the building. And then here are the steps that come out, like so. And then the door is right in here, like so. So let's just say that we're standing here and this is the sensor inside of our camera. So this sensor needs to be perfectly parallel with the front of the building. The front of the building, say, looks like this. Here's our steps. And then here's our door. So if our sensor is perfectly parallel with the building, both horizontally and vertically, we should get a nice square image of the building. But our challenge is here is that the field of view of the camera is like this. So we're getting the steps of the building, but a lot of this part here is all cut off and it's not going to be in the image. So the only way to get the rest of the building in the image is what? Obviously just back up to over here so that the field of view captures the entire image. But that's not always an option. Sometimes the only option we have really is to um, tilt the camera up, right? <laughs> so if we start to tilt the camera up, then we can capture the entire building. The problem is now you're going to get a keystoning error like this. The building is no longer going to be square. It's going to be more like a trapezoid. And then our stairs will be like this. And then our door will also be kind of an angle. And you know what I'm talking about. You've seen these kind of pictures. You've probably taken some like I have. I've done this many times. So you want to try to minimize how much you pitch the camera vertically the, as much as you can. So back up as much as you can so that you tilt the camera as little as you can to minimize this kind of distortion. Let's look at this building another way. Let's say we're looking top down like this. So this is the top of the building. And then here are the steps that we have. And there's the door right there. Well, and again, we're standing right here. And this is the front of the sensor. You want the front of the sensor to be perfectly parallel with the face of the building. So the face of the sensor has to be parallel with the face of the building, just like so. Meaning you want this to be parallel and this to be parallel. Exactly. Because what's going to happen is if your sensor is slightly pitched this way, or I think this is yaw, I'm not sure. What's going to happen is you're no longer parallel with the building, right? Because what's going to happen is the front of the building is now going to be pitched this way. And I'm, I'm exaggerating a little. But this side of the building, and let's, let's say this is the side of the building. This side of the building over here is going to be closer to me than this side. And that's going to cause the building to look this way when 
you have the camera sort of not perfectly parallel with the face of the building. Finally, the last thing you need to think about when you're taking a picture of a building is just make sure you're centered. So if the door is the center of the building, and, and it is a lot of times, you, you want to make sure that your camera sensor is centered exactly to the center of the building so you have perfect symmetry to the left and to the right. Let's go into workspace now and take a look at an image that I took just handheld with a fisheye lens that's going to have all of these problems that we just talked about and uh, I'll try to walk you through best I can how I correct for these so that we can get the best image we can. Let's start with this image here. This is one I took with the 8mm Fisheye Pro uh, and I took this picture just handheld. And if it's not obvious already, this image is crooked, right? All I have to do is kind of zoom in a little bit and you can see that this line is definitely lower than this line when it should be perfectly level. Uh, the other problem, and it's not too obvious here, but if I punch in, this side of the building is a little bit closer than this side. So the other problem I have here is I'm not exactly centered in the building, so I don't have perfect symmetry either. It's very subtle, but if I punch in here on the hand railing, I was trying to use the hand railing here as the center of the image, but I'm off just a little bit because you can see this parallax error where the door is not centered with the hand railing. The other problem I have is I couldn't get the entire building in the image or back up, so I had to tilt the camera up uh, to get the entire uh, building in the frame. So that caused the keystoning error, and that should be obvious because the top of the building is definitely smaller than the base of the building. So these are all of the problems that I talked about in the diagram before. So let's go ahead and get in and start to correct this. Now because I took this with the 8mm Fisheye Pro, correcting for the fisheye distortion is very easy. Uh, all you have to do is go into the edit module here, click on this camera icon, and then you'll see the fisheye correction and it's not grayed out because I did use an Olympus 8mm fisheye pro lens. All I have to do is click this box and I'll expand it. But you can see this is on auto. We could do it manually as well, but for the most part, that corrects the uh, bent lines and distortion that we get from the fisheye. But it did not correct for the other problems that I talked about. And this is, these are the kind of problems you need to fix no matter what fisheye lens you're using and whether or not you're using, able to use this fisheye correction feature or not. So let's, let's just start with an easy one. So I'll go into the crop module and we'll do a tilt adjustment. And what I like to do is I like to just kind of crop in a little bit here so I can actually see the, the lines uh, and then I'll start tilting it like so. Let me do a little bit more. There, that should do it. Let me zoom in. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Still a little bit off, but I think that's because of the other problem that we're going to work on next. So uh, let me pick a crop ratio of 16 by 9, and we'll leave it at that. So let's go back to the image and zoom out. So here's our 16 by 9 picture, and now it's leveled, and it's, it's already looking a lot better, right? But we need to fix for the... Uh, Let's start with the keystoning error. So I'll collapse this down, and right below the fisheye correction is the keystone compensation. And this has both the horizontal and vertical keystoning. And you can tell with the trapezoids, if you remember what I drew on my diagram, is a trapezoid. The problem is the top end of this building is too small compared to the bottom. So I want to expand it, so I want to go to the right on this slider. And uh, let's, let's just crank it all the way over and see what happens. All right, that looks a little bit weird, doesn't it? So let's back off. Maybe, maybe 85%, because if you do too much uh, keystone compensation, it starts to look very unnatural. 
but I think at around 80, let's try 75. I'm gonna go with 70 and, and like I said this is all a matter of taste and the subject matter that you're taking of how much you can do it before it starts to look a little bit too weird all right so the other problem I have to correct for is how this side of the building is a little bit closer to me than this side so I need to do the the vertical keystone compensation so let me punch in a little bit uh, and I'll, I'll correct for this cropping error here too wait for that to snap in and I want this side to be a little bit smaller than this, this side, or not smaller, but equal, but this side is bigger. So I need to slide over to the right again. Let me, let me just crank over to about 20 and see how that looks. We'll give this a second to pop in. And let me move up. And now this is a lot more level. I think that's enough. I, I don't like to do too much keystone compensation. Uh, I try to minimize that as much as I can, but uh, that's good. Now, now the problem is that the image is way cropped in, but we can go back to the fisheye correction uh, option here, and there's a zoom, zoom slider here. And this is opposite. I have to do a plus on the zoom to actually zoom out. And as you can see, now I have a black bar here because the, the uh, software has done this uh, fisheye correction causing this. But that's okay. I actually want to go all the way in until I see black bars all the way around the image, about like so. So I have black bar here, a black bar here, and a little bit up here. And that's perfect. And then all I have to do is go back in, and I have a 16 by 9 crop. And I can just bring this crop inside all four edges. And then I have this little dot here, and I want this dot to be in the center of the image. Like so. Let me move it over. There, now the dot is in the center of the building. This dot is centered with the center railing. And I'm just gonna crop in a little bit here to the left. Move this back over. Looks like I'm ca capturing a little bit of black bar. But that looks pretty good. Maybe I'll crop in just a little bit more. There. All right, let's go back to the camera module and see how that looks. All right, so this image I took with the Pixco 8mm fisheye lens. But since this was not an Olympus lens, the fisheye correction has been grayed out. Um, now, before we start doing any corrections, you know, it's best to adjust the color and exposure or any editing that you want to do uh, color-wise or exposure-wise before you start doing all these corrections. So the only thing I might do here is a little bit of white balance because the Pixco lens is definitely a little bit warmer than the fisheye lens from Olympus. So I'm just going to pick this white chair as the white point or gray point. Let's go back to the camera icon. And like I said, the fisheye is gone, so we have to use uh, what they call distortion correction. And with a fisheye lens, you just have to dial in a negative compensation here and as you can see I max it out at minus 100 and it got rid of most of the fisheye distortion but you can still tell there's a little bit bowing here just a little bit especially with this lamp post and since we can't do any more uh, distortion correction here what I have to do now is I, I like to export this image with that correction and just do it over again so I'm going to add the letter A here We'll give it a new file name. I export in EXIF plus TIFF. Uh, and this is supposed to be the maximum quality. I mean, personally, the jury's still out, in my opinion, on that. But uh, for now, we'll just export it as TIFF and click Export. And then we'll watch the uh, progress bar over here. 
And when it's done, it should pop up right next to the raw image because all I did was add the letter A and now it's here. Now that I have the image, uh, all I have to do is apply this distortion correction again and I'll just do another 100%. And depending on the lens you have, you may not need to do that much. Um, but you can see this is already starting to look better. Uh, that may have been a bit too much. Let me just back it off to maybe 90. Yeah, that looks good. And, and the best I can do is eyeball it here. Uh, now, let me try and level this. And I'll use this green line right here to level it. So I'll go over to the cropping icon. And let's see, I think I need to do a negative. No, let's do positive. And I'll click the camera icon and punch in and see how close I got. Oh, wow, that's pretty good. All right, so now let's try and correct for that uh, keystoning error. And it looks like they have something here that would do the same thing, but I'm just going to go back to the keystone tool and do it this way. All right, and I talked about maybe adjusting for this vertical keystone compensation uh, because I felt like this side was a little closer, but now that I have the image pretty close, I don't think I'll mess with it because you, you'll go crazy if you, if you tweak this all day long. So let's just stop here, but you can, you can keep going if you wanted to, but I think uh, for all intents and purposes, this is as good as it's gonna get uh, using Olympus workspace.